Hello there, everybody. My name is uh, Mr. Mockingbird, and this is my dear friend, Alexander Sandalis. And we're in here one week later, Kanye West, yay. Or if you're Big Quint, yee. Yee! Someone's got to tell that man how to say that. He says <laughs> yee. Still now, still. That's hilarious. Let, let him have his little thing, man. Let him have his little, little thing. <laughs> Um, we're now one week later, we're going to be uh, talking about our, our thoughts on Kanye West's latest project. Mm -hmm. Um, but before we get into it, yes, if you haven't seen our original video, oh, uh, I'd recommend watching that now, just so you know how our thoughts have changed as to what we're saying now. Very good. Because both of our thoughts have changed. They have, they have changed. One week later, I've listened to this project quite a lot and I'm enjoying it more. I am enjoying it more. Um, I'm having more fun with it. At the start, it was like, okay, I critiqued it more as a project, and now I'm just like, I'm playing it loud, I'm playing it in the car, I'm feeling it more, I'm in my kind of vibe, right? I'm enjoying it just musically. But that doesn't stop me from making me feel like this is still an overall mediocre, average, underwhelming project comparing it to his whole discography. And, but I still, and I still like the intention of where he's going. He's trying to be raw. He's trying to be vulnerable. Mm. And I think I, we both share a lot of the same thoughts dead in hip hop share. And I still think he missed on going fully with all of these thoughts. And it's like incomplete thoughts and incomplete concepts. And I still think he's missed on a lot of the themes that he could be exploring and answering as I said, I still think there's more questions and answers. You know, you put on your cover, I hate being bipolar. It's awesome. He gave us like a couple of lines on it. He gave us two tracks with some lines about it. That's, to me, that's, not I don't enough. want to say unacceptable, but it's just, it's under, it's just not, I don't know. It's not enough. So why do you keep going back to the album? You said you've listened to it another 12, 13 times, but you just said yourself that this album to you is average mediocre. What mm -hmm. made you listen to it another 13 times if it's average to you? That. That's it's ca it's catchy. Like I is it, it just though? it just feels the first half of the album specifically is the most catchy. The when first, I track two, track three, the only catchy tracks to me. To me, that's it's like I can I can move to that shit. Like mm, does it does it does it? So it's the substance you're talking about. So you so you like the production on this whole album? No. Yeet! No, I'm more talking the first portion of the album. I really feel ah uh, the first portion. Yeah. Um, and that's. I'm just talking superficially, I can enjoy it. Mm. If I go deeper, I lose some of that. Um, you know, I have some hypothesis why, but, you know, go ahead, give, give, give me your overview. Um, your version of that. I've listened to the album another six times. Only six, six, okay. Yep. Six is a lot of times, man. Uh, for a 20 minute album, I don't think so. What? For a 20 minute album, I reckon. Dude, I don't have a one. lot of time and I have a lot of music I listen to. Giving, giving, like, so really, if, it, if the album were double, that's three times. And giving an album another three listens is still quite a lot. Mm. To nah. me, I like the album less now. Yes, this is the interesting thing. From the original standpoint, I saw a lot of good in the album. The only problems I had with it on the original intent was with, I think, Ghost Town, the final track, the first track. Uh, the change now is I really enjoy the first track. I see, I, I listen to it a lot more and I kind of like the, the thinking about who he's talking about killing. I still think it's, it's himself, the bipolar, the ego and all that sort of thing. But I like how other people have been talking about it. It could be from... The audience view or from another point of view and I kind of like the, the switch up I, I still really like what he's talking about really he's just having a bit of fun that the first track in a way when he when he comes in with the -pum -pum. but no I mean like I'm feeling that when I like how I wish we got straight mm. into the album like that. Mm. I wish there wasn't a two minute delay. See, I like the two minute delay though. Like Yeet! at first, I felt the same, but after listening to a lot more, the the only reason the two minute delay doesn't really work is because for what that sets up the album, he doesn't talk enough about it as you as you articulate. Right. If he talked about a lot of what the two minute intro had, then then it would make a lot more sense. I didn't think he needed to repeat himself that many no. times though. And then and then. Yeah. Yikes, Yo. uh, I like more now. This is an amazing song. And can we just talk about the hook? Apparently, um, not Ebro, uh, Peter Rosenberg said that Drake wrote this hook. Wouldn't have surprise you, me. Have you heard that? No. And I just want to mention that that's quite hypocritical. It's like a big, that's pretty, 
yeah, it's quite hypocritical of Pusha T to talk shit about um, Drake for someone writing his bars when Drake apparently wrote this hook. Yeah, unconfirmed. Hypocritical. Pusha T's not Kanye. Just because he's on good music doesn't mean he's rapping Kanye. He's still rapping himself. I think it's hypocr- I don't think it's hypocritical. Of Pusha T. Yeah. Because Pusha T's going from, I write my music, you don't. He's not talking about Kanye. But he has a problem with other people writing their own music. I'm yeah. not writing their own Maybe music. Maybe he has a problem with Kanye, but he just doesn't voice it because he's a closer friend to him, so he talks to him more. Maybe. But I just think that's like a double standard type of thing. Like you pick Drake, but you don't pick Kanye for pick, up, pick him up on this. Motherfuckers gonna make mistakes. I don't know. I, and get into the song though. Who cooks dope? Hooks dope. The beat's dope. He's playing back. His flow is dope. It's a really fun track, and I love the ending. The ending is him being more free. You got superpowers. He's screaming like, "It's a really good track." He's more aggressive towards the end. Yeah. Out of all the tracks of this album, that's one of the ones which I play the most. Yeah, yeah. And that's, then we get into "All Mine," which I think is the best track in the album. This hook is absolutely amazing. Okay. And at the start, like, I was undecided on the hook. I was undecided on this song, mm. but I, as like you, I'm feeling it. Like that is it's it valley? Seductive. I, yeah, I think so. Valley and, and Ty Dolla and Party. All three of those artists do their thing. And it's short and sweet. There's one verse from Kanye. Hook comes back in. It ends. And it's... Two things at once. It's, it's a fun verse, you know. It's not, exactly. It doesn't take itself too seriously. I kind of like that sort of shit. So, so, starting off strong. First three tracks, we I'm not mad at those three tracks. No. See, every time I go back to this album, it's always how I feel. I go back to the first three tracks, I find myself liking it more and more. But then... I just don't feel it. It's, we, now we're taking like a down tempo. Like we're, we're dropping the tempo down. Yeah. Young Thug, Jeremiah, Kanye and the Hook. It doesn't do anything for me. I really don't. I'm not feeling it. And the verse is nice, but like, I just don't like the beat. It's just so... like. I will quote FIFO. FIFO said that this album is missing the Kanye touch. Like you're hearing it. You're hearing Kanye, but Kanye is more known for his, pro- his production. I'm not hearing that. I know he's gone minimal on purpose, right? but it's just missing that, that, that punch. extra, that extra punch. Like, you know, yeah. Kanye has his, like you hear a beat, you're like, that's Kanye. Mm. We hear a song, you're just like, that's special. Cause that's Kanye. It's what he did on Pusha T, Daytona. Yeah, exactly. But you listen to this and I'm just like, I'm not feeling it. Like, I know you're speaking shit, but I can't hear enough. Cause there's not enough emphasis to build around it. I really, I mean, yeah, really the production it. overall is quite, I don't know, lackluster to me. Yeah, so I can't really get, it's so hard for me to get past this track because it really bores me. It really bores me. And then that's gotten you into a mood to listen to the next track. And I don't even right? like, I don't even like Charlie Wilson on here anymore. It's oh, I can't of, fuck with that. Char- Charlie, and I, I think Charlie does this hook well. Ye- he does it well, but it just... And then we strips it back. Uh, with the little. The fight you. It's too wrong to high school. The truth tell the high school. Too close to snipe you. Truth told I like you. Too bold to type you. Too rich to fight you. Calm down your life. So I can I admit that. that's, I can I that's that. a real good song. It's just, I think maybe it's the fourth track that ruins it for me, but even, even listen to that now, like I just, there's still something missing from that track for me. Okay. I feel like maybe, maybe because it's just such an old school kind of sound. It sounds like something that like was on, uh, uh, fuck, what's after college dropout? Late, late registration. It sounds like a track off there. And I don't know, as much as people want the old Kanye, I don't want old Kanye. I want Kanye to keep evolving and doing new shit. And he's always, you know, with, especially with Live Pablo, he just grabs elements of music and just adds it to the, sort of his new stuff. I, I don't know, I just, I just wasn't really feeling old Kanye there. <laughs> and this motherfucking track right here. Are you, are you feel the same? You like it more? You like it less? Worst track in the album. Starts off amazing. It does. It's Kanye it's singing. Great. Amazing. Honestly, one of the best beats in the album too with this. Absolutely soulful, beautiful. The kick cut, he fucks it. And, and shake. Shakes, I don't feel shake either, shake, man. Shake fucks it. And it's so different. But by itself, shake's not bad. No, Shake just it? don't suit the song, who though. Said it? So I don't like this track even more now. And all of the other that are commenting, you're not, like, you can't mean shit because you don't like Ghost Town or Ghost Town's best track, the album, top five Kanye tracks. 
You're welcome to that opinion. You can think that. But fuck me, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're not, no one's wrong. Out, nah, just an man. opinion is like a fucking asshole. We all got one, you know? Yeah, man. Um, but I, I just don't feel it. Like, I listen to the start of the song because I start so strong. Because yeah. Kanye's singing so good. Like... When something's so good, it means that the bad is going to be more bad. Like yeah, it's, it's, a it's all about the balance, man. So like, it just makes the track so underwhelming. I think he leaned on Cardi and Shake too much. I think <sighs> I want to hear a version where it's predominantly him, not eighty percent of the song. Jesus, yeah. sorry. And then the, the last track. It's too. The production's too simple for me. It's just like a drums and an organ. No, I have them. No, I just. You know, I, it suits. The, I think it suits to the theme of what he's talking about—the vulnerability of having children, having uh, uh, female daughters, and you know what he was like growing up, and you know maneuvering through all that. I think it suits the beat, but uh, you know, going track by track, it's not as cohesive as I'd like it to be. Yeah, I feel like if there was like tracks in between that last track there, where it kind of built up to it more. Yeah. I feel like after Ghost Town and the other few tracks, like when I get to the end, I'm just like, I'm just all, all of a sudden just like. I don't care. Mm. I don't care what you guys say. This beat isn't doing anything for me. I'm just, I'm just not feeling. Now you gotta, you gotta make sure people understand. That's how you listen to music. The beat's mm-hmm. gotta hit you first. The beat's gotta hit me, man. For me, that's not the case. Yeah, I can get person. past that to see it thematically and conceptually. Um, mm. Obviously, we're two different humans. We're gonna experience it differently. Mm. Now, I want to break down some um, a potential theory I saw on Reddit that was uh, really interesting. Um, I, you know what? I originally wrote this is possibly one of his most revealing projects yet, but I actually don't agree with myself anymore. I, I, I think it could have been, but I don't think it is anymore. Um, it could be up there, but it just executed so underwhelmingly. It, it, you know what it missed? It missed the grandeur. Dark fantasy. For me, Jesus has grandeur. I know a lot of people don't like Jesus, but it had this... this Oomph, this fucking hits you in the face, like wow, and Dark mm. Fantasy hits you in the face in another way. It's like, wow, this is so this is so bright and lively, and then mm. late registration and graduation, they hit you with this deep internal kind of you feel it in your heart and soul. Mm. And I feel like a lot of those aspects, they're kind of in here, but they're not in here to re- enough. They're like, it's not I'm not getting enough. It's too minimal. I'm not yeah, I'm just not getting enough of it. <sighs> and you know, yeah, Ghost Town released the same day as Yay was released. This shit was re-scrapped. This whole album was re-scrapped as I posted on our Twitter and Instagram. I heard uh, someone say something that was very similar. They said, it's like Kanye, like obviously he said he's going to put out an album every seven days. It's like he, someone's like, he rushed this album. He 100% did. It makes sense. Cause, but hold on, let's make one thing clear. That's how a lot of his albums have been made. But yeah. not the production. The vocals. Jesus, the vocals were recorded mm-hmm. in like two weeks. Um, but if you notice, a lot of it is not deep... Con- oh, it's, a lot of it's not really... Uh... Actually, I'm not even going to go there. Skip that. Um, but the production, like... I wonder how much of the production he redid on this. Because usually that's the shit that takes him the longest. Mm. I don't Do we have any idea? Nah. Right. I feel like... Well, some, the thing is though, some of these beats, like, he could have made them years ago. Because he's got so much chilling in the vault. Like, now, maybe all these tracks were done like... Not even this year. And maybe he's just like, oh, fuck it. I need to make an album. Uh, let's just record some vocals and put this out. And I, I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed. I mean, I think people are going to even pass. And this is the problem. The Kanye pass. Kanye apologist. As, as Dead End called but, them. But this album's really received a lot of like, like love and joy. Like, I feel like a lot of people will continue to like this album. Because it brings people joy. And I can't knock them for that. Because I feel joy mm. as well sometimes. I'm critiquing it from a musical... We are critiquing it from a musical standpoint yeah, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, We're being... Trying to be... You know... I'm going to be easy on them. Just being real. Just being real, man. Like, I, I think this is the weakest kind of album I've heard. Yep. And... One of them. I think... It, well... I think well, this one in The Life of Pablo. Like, I, I still like The Life of... But the thing with Life of Pablo is when I first heard it, I didn't like it. But when I listened to it more, I liked it more. The difference with this one is I'd like it less. And that's rare. Life of Pablo grew on me, not as an album, but in terms of tracks. I would keep going back there through a different track every week. And for like for months, I was just listening to different stuff from the Life of Pablo. Well, now, what about, like, oh, in the shit old media, like, so he's talked about, you know, the lead up to this album, he's gone, he's gone on Twitter, TMZ, he's been doing interviews talking about uh, race, politics, 
uh, religion, not religion, race politics and, um, you know, Trump. And he's been very, making it very clear where he stands. And he's addressed quite, he's addressed almost none of it. Mm-hmm. And, and I just think that's irresponsible and it, it decreases your integrity as a person because it's like, oh, what, you just did all that just for fucking attention yeah. and press? Imagine if this album involves him halfly talking about to do with his bipolar with Kim and stuff and the other half to do addressing with... Addressing the rest. Addressing the rest. Imagine if the whole album was about that with the same production and without features. Well, after the Team Z interview, he redid it, so maybe it was. We don't know. Mm-hmm. All I can tell you is that the two biggest things I had wrong with this, with this album was the features... Actually, no, it's probably the biggest one. And the production as well, yeah. I thought for a Kanye album, it didn't sound like his sort of production. Like, I, I could listen to these beats and be like, I couldn't just be like, that's Kanye. I'd listen to these beats and just be like, I don't know who did this beat. Normally with Kanye beats, you fucking know it's a Kanye beat. And that's a little less. It's a little clear. less. On some of them, you can. Like with Yikes. Yikes, straight away, you're just like, that's Kanye. Whereas other ones, you are not sure. And these... Like, the certain, too many of these tracks would be like, oh man, I'm loving Kanye on this. But then a feature would come in, I'd be like... I want more Kanye. If you're going to have a seven track album, give me Kanye. And there's one thing about the structure of this album that I think is a, is a quite a big issue as, as to why I don't I enjoy it as much and why you may not. For a 24 minute album, it's structured like a 50, 60 minute album. Now, what I mean by that is that, and I'm paraphrasing this from a Reddit comment I make, mm. Reddit comment I read. Um, if you look at Daytona, look at the timestamps of the first verse. They start all within 15 seconds, first yeah. verse. Yay, there's only one track that starts within 15 seconds. The rest start all from 30 seconds into the verse. Uh, the, the first verse starts with 30 seconds in all the way to 2 minutes and 20 seconds with the first track starting that, yeah. that late. The first verse starting that late. Mm-hmm. And having the verse, first verse start late isn't a problem, but it's very hard to, to create something that's really hard hitting when it's such a short album. So, I don't know. That's, that's kind of how I feel like... Daytona was so good to me because it, it just hit you straight away. This one, you know, it's like took longer and that, that didn't really work too well with me. Mm. I've, I don't have to touch up on two more. I've, I've stated, I've, I've definitely brought up a lot of things similarly that I've already said. But overall, the only changes with this album that I've, uh, for me is I like the second and third track more and I like the first track a lot more too. So that's, that's kind of it for me. I'm probably just going to be smashing the second and third track like crazy. And that's all I'm going to remember from this album. I've given this album six more tries. I'm not going to go back to it again. Whoa. I'm not going to go back to it again. See ya. Uh, did, you, did, you, did that make sense? The, the, the timestamp thing that yeah, I mentioned? Yeah, it did. Yeah, exactly. Like, Do you push... kind of feel that or no? Mm, I don't really feel like it's an issue. I feel like for other people, they get it. I feel like structure can help an album, but I feel like it doesn't matter too much. As long, like if things work, they work, man. Like if he's saying stuff and the production works around it, I don't mind when a rapper comes in. <sighs> Everyone's different. He's, tr- he's trying to be introspective, man. He's trying to be all this self-acceptance type thing. And I just think it, it missed the mark. Yeah. As much as he's talking about things that matter to him and that might matter to other people, it's not what I wanted from him. Hmm. And you know what? At the end of the day, I don't expect anything from Kanye. Kanye's going to do Kanye. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. And the people are going to love it and live that shit, eat that shit up. Good for them. He's given them what they want. And even though I didn't get what I want, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Kanye's, Kanye's done enough for me. Like Realistically, yeah, man. He's done an incredible amount for yeah. this music industry. He can drop mediocre albums for the rest of his life and I won't give a fuck. If he's making success from it and, and doing good, good for him. Hmm. All hmm. I know is he's done enough to, for yeah. hip-hop itself for it to just grow in an incredible way. So and He's left a, he's left a strong yeah. mark. Leave your, comment, leave your thoughts below, guys. Leave your thoughts why you disagree with us, why you agree with us, why you want us to die. Why you want us to... Why you think Ghost Town is like a top three Kanye track, even though it's only been out for a week. Why you think Ghost Town sounds like Runaway, please shut your mouth. That is quite egregious to me. That's okay, we're entitled to our opinions. Man, that's, that's all i got to say. We're Jungle Beats. And uh, yeah, sorry, sorry Kanye. <laughs> Look at us, bro. We kind of fucked up. We kind of fucked up. We like, oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> shit. Yeah. Sorry, Kanye. Yeet! 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 Hmm. Yeet! Yeet! Isn't it streaming Yeet. now? Didn't it say it was streaming 60 Yeet. minutes? Yeet! Yeet! Yeah. Yeet! 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 Yeet!